of press fit. So you just drill the scapula and remember that there is a mismatch in the diameter. So if the bone is extremely good, strong, and if you are afraid about fracture of the leg, you can use uh, you can use a larger drill, eight mm, but you lose you lose for uh, the press fit. Or what you can do is you, you use the same, but you do two or three times like this, and this enlarge a little bit the hole. This is in case where you have a very strong bone. Then, it's easy. So you see that we have two different uh, base plates. One with a short peg, 15 mm long. One with a 25 mm peg, which is for revision or for glenoid bone graft. You see the difference. For a regular case, you, we use 35, uh, 25 mm. 15 millimeter, I'm sorry. We use 15 millimeter peg. So, 15 millimeter peg. Here we have, uh, so I like, try to show you. I'm just come here. Thank you. So, you see that there is up and down. Here it's written up. Probably you cannot see it because you are too far away. But there is up and down, just to know. And up, that means that you are in this position at the upper part. And you just impact your granite. So you see that it's difficult. I'm afraid about fracture. I do not want to have fracture. So I prefer to use I prepare a little bit more, I increase, I enlarge a little bit the central hole just in order to avoid the fracture in the saw bone. And then you enter easily. Now your granite is in a good position. You see that it's correct. Now I remove this, I remove this uh, tool the base plate holder, and now there are four holes. Anterior and posterior hole are for compression screw. Superior and inferior hole are for locking screw. Uh, this, uh, of course, we have to start with anterior and posterior. This is a 3.2 millimeter drill, drill bit. So we start with the anterior, so it's always a question, how much inclination, how much retrogression, how much blah, 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 blah. This is completely artificial. What we want is we want to have a good bone purchase. So rather than to tell you I want 10 degrees or 20 degrees, no. Just look for the good bone and go with your, your orthopedic surgeon. You don't need to have 10 degrees or 20 degrees and you just look for drill and push, drill and push. And you make sure that you have good bone per chest. That's good. When you, you know that, you are happy. Then with the posterior one, I, same thing, I look for a good bone per chest. Push and drill, push and drill. Make sure that you have good cortices. That's good. So, another point is that with the human ace, 10 degrees and 20 degrees, it is impossible to distinguish. 89 degrees and 90 degrees, the ace is able to tell you. But 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, it's almost impossible. So rather than to try to have this kind of inclination, look for a good bow, is what, what you want. You can measure the length of your, of your screw, anterior and posterior. You have uh, this tool for that. We measure, so it's a very long one here. Uh, it's more than 50. And you measure also the one posterior. It is 44. So there are several questions here. The first question is, uh, what happens if the posterior one does not hold, and do not, does not have good purchase? And this happens in about 20% of the cases. Well, in this case, you don't implant it. 
It happens in 20% of the cases, there are only three screws, and it is not a big problem. And uh, so the second problem is uh, how much compression do we want? Well, there is no secret for that. You just want to have a good purchase of the ball, and you will feel uh, that you have a good implantation. So I implant the second one right now before tightening the screw. Also, another point is, what about the nerve, the suprascapular nerve? Uh, how do you know uh, if, there, if the suprascapular nerve is at risk or not? You know that the suprascapular nerve is turning around the coracoid here and turning around the spine posteriorly. Well, the suprascapular nerve, when you implant the reverse prosthesis, in most of the time is not helpful because there is no supraspinatus, no infraspinatus left. So even though you get some problems, it can happen, I don't know, honestly, I don't know, you do not have problem with the suprascapular nerve. So now you just tighten both screws until you get good compression. You have to do it gradually. You don't want to break anything. And the inclination, you may have until 30 degrees of inclination with respect to the base plate. Don't just do it slowly. Like any orthopedic surgery, don't try to be too fast, don't try to be too strong, just go slowly and it works. You can always put the, the, the two screws in the correct position and then you have a good compression of your base plate. You see, it is progressive. Also, I had a, several, I had a big angle, but you see that it, it's not difficult to implant. So once this is done, it is done, it is stable. Then you have the locking screw superior and inferior. And inside the base plate, inside the base plate, there are two washers in order to allow the locking mechanism. Two washer, superior and inferior, and these washer give you a good uh, locking phenomenon. And also it is multidirectional, meaning that you can enter your you can enter your screws with different angle and it will work. And that allows you again to look for the good ball.